This Sunday, we celebrate the part of the Christmas story when three travelers from the east followed a star at its rising and discovered and saw the child Jesus and Mary, his mother. They brought him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And we call this encounter the Epiphany. The word epiphany comes from two Greek words that mean intense appearance. All of us have had epiphanies in our life. Those intense moments when we experience something profound and new. We gain a particular insight or a revelation of something previously unknown to us. We see things differently than we did before, and it changes us as we go forward. I can remember several epiphanies while traveling. When I saw New York City for the very first time, I arrived by train from Washington, D.C., and when I emerged from Grand Central Station and saw the midtown skyscrapers and rows and rows of yellow cabs on Park Avenue, I knew I was in some place very different from home. Or when I arrived in Paris on my first trip to Europe, also by train, it was around midnight, and I have, was very tired from a very long journey, and there was a fog hovering over the station, and in the distance, I could hear someone playing a trumpet. It was like a scene in the movie. Both experiences have stayed with me all of these years and remind me of the excitement of seeing new places and the surprises that often come from travel. Epiphanies come in all shapes and sizes. Perhaps it was that moment when we discovered our true vocation or our careers and we realized what we wanted to study and do with our lives. Perhaps it was seeing the Rocky Mountains or a Gothic cathedral or an ocean sunrise or sunset. Or maybe it was an intense feeling, conviction, or an idea that changed how we see ourselves and the world around us. Perhaps it was witnessing an incredible act of kindness by someone, or the bravery of someone else that inspired us to do better and to strive for more in life. Epiphanies are those moments when we gain a heightened awareness of the good, the beautiful, and the true. And when it happens, we are placed in the presence of the source of goodness beauty and truth, and the light behind them shines out. The great biblical example of this is the transfiguration, when the Lord went up Mount Tabor and his divinity shone through his humanity and his apostles got a glimpse, only for a moment, but a glimpse of the resurrection. The interesting thing about epiphanies is that we can't control them. We can't manufacture them or make them happen when we want them to. They come to us often unexpectedly, like grace. The Magi had an epiphany of the star, and they were overjoyed at seeing it. And then it came over the place where the child was, and in seeing him, they had yet another epiphany. Now, we can assume that they spent many days, months, and may, perhaps even years searching for signs, scanning the skies, and waiting for that unexpected moment. This is a lot like the spiritual life. It's what we do when we pray. We look for signs by being attentive. We put ourselves in the presence of God, waiting for his light to shine forth from our real human experiences. We cannot make an epiphany happen, but when it happens, we must be ready to receive it 
and then act upon it. The Magi searched for a star, and when it appeared, they got up and followed it. When we receive a message from the Lord, when we have an intense experience of his presence, whether it be the manifestation of something beautiful or goodness or truth, we cannot just hold on to it and keep it to ourselves. We must follow it, share it, and use it. This part of the Christmas story is challenging because it points us to two very important aspects of discipleship, searching and acting. Searching implies that we don't have all of the answers. It is an admission that we don't have it all figured out, so we are looking, we are searching. But too often today in the modern world, people have already made up their minds about all sorts of things including Christ and his church. They leave little room for growth or change. But as disciples, we must learn to set ourselves aside and search for what God wants us to do, and then listen to him, and then trust him above everything else. Secondly, we must put into practice what God wills us to do keeping our faith, our religious convictions, and our epiphanies to ourself is simply unacceptable. It was only by following the star that the Magi arrived in Bethlehem and prostrated themselves before the Savior of the world. And because of what they saw, they did not return to Herod, but departed for their country by another way. As Fulton Sheen commented so magnificently, of course they did, he said, for no one comes to Christ and goes back the same way he came. My brothers and sisters, our life is not our own. The God who made us and desires to save us has a plan for each and every one of us. We must learn to resist every human temptation not to surrender everything to him, including the finest gift that we have to offer, which is our whole self. We must continue searching for what is good and beautiful and true, and when it appears, to see the light of God shining through like a star with royal beauty bright westward leading, still proceeding, guiding us to the perfect light.